Hey everyone, today we're gonna be taking my salsa muckluck right here. This is normally a fat bike. Um, and we're gonna be turning it into an ATB, an all-terrain bike or a gravel bike, whatever you wanna call it. As you can see, I've already started the process a little bit, but uh, let's finish it up in this video. So this muckluck, uh, I have another video on it. I got a really good deal on it. It was just the frame. I happen to have lots of other parts together, so I have basically assembled this. Normally this wheel set right here, it's a 29 plus wheel set. So these are 29 by three Bontrager XR2s. This wheel set is normally on my RSD Mayer for the summer. Originally I was gonna get another fat wheel set for this, but I haven't found a good deal on one haven't wanted to drop the money on it and then I realized well you know I do need it something for gravel for dirt for those days where I can't head up to the mountains and ride so I wanted something that I could take on dirt roads run errands whatever and I realized this muckluck since it's a medium which normally I ride a large I realized this would be a pretty good candidate it's got a pretty tall stack has a 69 degree head tube angle and actually Weirdly enough, the geometry is not that far off from a cutthroat or a Fargo, kind of right in the middle of them, honestly. Very similar angles, very similar wheelbase. The, like, the major difference is actually just the reach and the stack. This has a, um, a reach that's about 30 millimeters longer and about 30 millimeters shorter. So luckily I do have this stem on here. This is the first thing that I've done for this, just to see if it would even work. So I've thrown some surly corner bars on here and I've done uh, three or four rides with it just like this. And I, I actually really like it. It's very comfortable with this stem. Do I wish it was a tiny bit taller? Yeah, probably, but not much to be honest. Like it's, it's pretty spot on. Where I have really had some struggles though is right here in the gearing. So this is a 10-speed Dior drivetrain, so 11 to 36 tooth. And then this is a 28 tooth elliptical uh, chain ring here on the front. This works fine for mountain biking. I mean, it is a little bit of a high gearing for mountain biking, especially on a fat bike, it, but it works, it works. What I found though is on the road, it does not do great. It's just, I am pretty much always in, you know, these four gears right here, these top four. So what I've done is I'm gonna convert this over to a two by drivetrain. And that's gonna be really what completes this build. I'll end up with a 36 tooth chain ring on the front. And so with the 36 and an 11 right here, that'll get me going fast enough, especially with these big diameter of tires right here. But then on the inside, I'll also have a 22 tooth chain ring so that uh, you know, I still have plenty of climbing gears. So on here, I have a Samix crank. This actually came off of a Bear Grease, um, found it used. And so my original plan was to just use this. It's a direct mount chain ring. And I was gonna get a spider that I could put on there so that I could then put convert it to a double. Unfortunately, that's really hard to find, um, especially one to fit something like this, a Samix crank, not a SRAM crank. There are some companies like NSB and um, Origin 8 actually makes an adapter, but I found they're either not in stock or they're like 80 bucks and they're not sure if it'll fit on this crank just because of the shape up here. The other thing is that they don't really make two by fat bike cranks anymore. I feel like in general, two by is still sticking around, especially in the road and gravel world. But when it comes to this wide bottom bracket and the, the long spindle and everything like that, they're very hard to find. One thing I did find is that they do sell a lot of race face two by spindle converters, whatever you want to call it. However, I don't, they won't fit on this. This is not a cinch crank. Like I said, it's direct mount. My RSD, that other fat bike, that does have race face cranks. Unfortunately, I tried to swap them, do a direct swap. And these Samix cranks, they come in contact with the chainstay right here. Um, so that wasn't gonna work to just do a direct swap because I wanna ride both bikes. In the end, what I had to do was go to good old eBay, which I don't think I've used since 2004. I know lots of people use it and it's really good for car parts. And I found these right here. These are some race face turbine cranks. It's a two by setup, 36 tooth, 
with a 22 chain ring underneath. Um, it comes with the bottom bracket, but I don't know if I need it. We'll see. I think the um, spindle diameter matches these actually. So should be good there. Um, but yeah, so this should work. Came off of a Matovicane, so a, a fat bike off of Bikes Direct um, that had a 197 millimeter spacing in the rear and um, two by. So it should work. Let's test it out. it off. Do a quick little test fit, see if this is the same. Yeah, it is. No contact on that side. I think it's gonna work. Yeah, that's gonna work. I might need to add a spacer. I'll probably try it as is, but uh, yeah, I mean, it clears just barely. That's another crucial piece of the puzzle here. So they, there's no way to mount it right here, obviously. So you need a, a clamp on collar. This also says it needs to have 55 millimeters of offset. They use the company problem solvers to create that. And then I realized, so I ordered that. It's on its way. Um, should be here any, any day now. But uh, I realized I have this from an ice cream truck and I, I didn't measure it. It's probably about the same. It should be pretty close to the same. If anything, it's gonna be a little bit outboard because the ice cream truck, that generation had a 132 mil bottom bracket or 123. So we'll see, I think this will work. My main concern though is gonna be if this is big enough right here. I don't, I think I need a 34.9 and I don't think that's what the ice cream truck, the outer tube was. It's too small. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put this on hold till my direct mount adapter comes, which unfortunately is not till Monday. So then we'll be able to put that on there and be good to go. All right, so it's been a few days actually. The problem solvers uh, adapter came and I brought it out here and I compared it to this one that was the Surly one and they were identical. When I went to put the Problem Solvers one on, I just wanted to test fit it, see if there was a difference in fit. I found that it fit the exact same. I figured out the key was that it needs to be essentially at the right angle and it was kind of a struggle with the derailleur and this cable and everything on here. So I finally got it on there right and you, I kind of had to squeeze the, the clamp closed, then thread the bolt in. Instead of normally, you know, you have some, some wiggle room on little things like that. This, I did not. So a trick with these is you put the, the master link, if it has a master link, you put it on top, then you put the rear brake on and then push down. And it'll snap into place. So I think I'm good to go. Just need to throw some pedals on it. This is where I need your input. So I've been doing a lot of research. I want to keep it as a plus tire, pretty much, especially just because these wheels are I-40s. Um, it's actually an I-45 on the front and an I-40 in the rear. So the minimum I would probably run is a 2.6. Um, if you have recommendations on a fast rolling 2.6, 2.8 or 3.0, and I'm talking fast rolling, basically gravel style here is what I'm after. Um, these XR2s are great, but um, you know, I, I'd want something a little smoother, maybe like those Ramblers right there. Something more along those lines. I mean, I do have some Chronicles left, but these feel like they've rolled just as fast, maybe faster. Let me know what your recommendations are. Hey, we're out for our maiden voyage on the Muckluck ATB edition. So I'm gonna do this loop I, I like to do. It's about 12 miles and it's about half and half dirt and pavement. Unfortunately, most of the pavement is right now. 
so just gonna enjoy it even though it's like 24 out here or something at least there's no real wind i do really like this tire size even on the road it's just a really good all-around tire size it has some cushion on a rigid bike it maintains tons of momentum i don't feel shy or anxious about when the road or double track or whatever i'm on can get pretty intense or nasty if these were smoother or had a more continuous tread block down the middle actually i, I have been thinking maybe i'll buy a pair of the surly extraterrestrials i've heard conflicting things on those but you know in the 2.5 i think they'll be okay on these rims i mean that's it's a pretty na narrow tire for how wide these rims are but i think i might test it out there we go shift into that smaller cog power my way up this i guess power is a loose term more like gently pedal yesterday i posted on instagram a picture of basically the back half of this bike and said long live two by my cousin's husband messaged me and said no <laughs> and i said wait let me explain i'm still a big fan of one by on mountain bikes i think that makes total sense but for something that's gonna be your everything bike going on pavement going on dirt for an all-purpose bike an all-terrain bike for the rise of the atb two by just makes so much sense one reason i actually don't love one by gravel bikes you are severely limiting yourself kind of on both ends although typically a one by is really good at the low end at being able to you know spin up stuff whereas what you really lose is that top end for when it's flat when it's downhill when you could be going so much faster but you can't because your little legs can only go so fast at some point you're gonna wish that you had more gearing on that top end this is a 36 tooth so it's not like it's huge but with these 29 by 3 inch tires the diameter is massive so you're able to get going quite a bit faster if it was a, a gravel bike and it was running 45 millimeter tires on a 700 c rim it's probably pretty comparable I'll, I'll do some double checking and i'll put the chart in right here but it's probably comparable to a 42 tooth or a 40 tooth which is something you find on a lot of gravel bikes if i was loaded up right now i would really appreciate the fact that my little chain ring is a 22 tooth you need a lot of low end gearing when you're loaded up these tires feel so good on this dirt this washboardy stuff it's not too bumpy like a, a fat bike can get a little bumpy and almost like you know that tractor bounce they call it and then on smaller tires it's almost jarring it's tough hits this is kind of in the middle on the other side of the hill i can go up on the chain ring and i don't run out of gearing i can keep pedaling maintain my momentum go faster what kind of inspired me to, to try this out was actually the jones bikes i've really been interested in the long wheelbase the lwb but it's so hard to know those bikes are just so different that i don't want to just buy one without having ridden one because i have no idea if i'll like it or not it's such a a niche bike this isn't really like it but kind of is similar in some ways but that's one reason i'd be interested in the jones bars it'd be like having these back here except without the drop 
and I like the idea of that. I've had Jones bars before, I liked them. I like the Malocos better, but that's in more trail situations, uh, not, not on stuff like this. Oh man, this big chain ring makes such a big difference. I would definitely, right around now, 16 miles an hour, 17, that's where that 28 tooth starts to, you're pedaling pretty quick. Right now, I'm not even at a, I'm maybe at 60 on my cadence. And uh, yeah, plenty to go. I'll test it on this little downhill right now. See when I start to run out of gears. All right, here we go. All right, so final thoughts. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with it, um, especially this two by gearing that was such a headache to find. Again, that was not easy. No one makes a two by crank for a fat bike anymore. So if you do have a direct mount, um, good luck. If you have a race face crank, which many people do, um, they do sell a two by spider that should work. So even with this 11 to 36 tooth, one, you know, 10 speed in the back with a two by 10 is a really good setup. When it comes to tires, again, I'm, I'm happy. They work great. This was, you know, a pretty tame ride for what I want to do. And for compared like in the summer, this would be something I was just doing because I didn't have time to head up to the mountains. Right now, they're a little bit of overkill. If I'm going to be doing things that are more pavement based, I'll definitely switch these out. I mean, again, let me know if you have any ideas on a 2.6, 2.8, 3 inch tire, other than like the V tire speedster. Anything like that that would be, you think would be faster rolling than these, especially on hard pack, pavement, that kind of stuff. I do think I'll switch these bars out if I get some Jones bars, um, or maybe the Malocos. The only thing with the Malocos is they don't come back. I want to shorten up the reach a little bit. Um, I've, I've helped the stack with that stem. I would love to shorten the reach just a tiny bit more and the Malocos only come back to, you know, right about there. So I don't know, it's probably about even with, compared to these bars. Do you have any other alt bars you think would be good? They need to work with um, flat bar levers and stuff. So if ATBs are going to be a, a new thing, if that's what we're going after then um i think a fat bike like this with some skinnier tires some different bars and definitely different gearing i think they might be the ultimate atb especially because hey in the winter if you've got snow or if you have a bunch of sand throw some fat tires on there and you're good to go still so hope you enjoyed watching this if you did be sure to subscribe like it let me know your thoughts down in the comments and uh i'll see you next time